Discord is proprietary software. So if you're building free software, it's very likely you also care about free software and care about its distribution. So if that is the case, you should not be using Discord as your means of communication or the way that you manage your free software project. At least that is a takeaway from this blog post by Drew DeVault. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll likely realize that even though I agree with the general sentiment of the article, I'm not in complete agreement, but even so, I still think it's a really good article and worth actually thinking about. So, using Discord petitions your community on either side of a walled garden, with one side that's willing to use the proprietary Discord client and one that isn't. It sets up users who are passionate about free software, i.e. your most passionate contributors or potential contributors as second-class citizens. Now, I don't think this is entirely accurate. Not to say these people don't exist. I think it's sort of more overstating how many people there actually are. You know, the hardcore free software guys, sort of like the free software extremists, the, the Stallman types who want absolutely nothing to do with proprietary software in their life, and they'll try to eliminate it at every single step of the path. As someone who runs a community of people that care about free software, I can tell you that those people are absolutely the minority, and most people are a lot more like me, who are sort of moderate, who do care about free software, but are happy to use things like, you know, YouTube, Twitter, maybe they'll play some games on Steam even, but when there actually is good free software options, they're going to jump on them at an absolute instance. But he continues on by saying, by using Discord, there are also people that you physically stop actually being able to communicate with your project. You lock out people who have accessibility needs for whom using the Discord client is a nightmare to use. You lock out people who cannot afford new hardware that makes the resource intensive client actually pleasant to be used either. You lock out people who are using novel or unusual operating systems or devices, you know, people who are innovators or early adopters. And you also lock out people who are in countries that are under US sanction like, say, Iran. Plus, if you're a privacy conscious user, you might be making use of something like Tor or a VPN. And in many cases, you simply cannot connect to Discord altogether. Now, all of that, I think, is totally valid, and you want to have as many users being able to interact with your project as is physically possible. But to say that one side is locking out users and the other side isn't, is also not really accurate, because by not using Discord, you're locking out users as well, arguably way, way more users, because there are a lot of developers out there who do all of their communications on something like Discord and don't want to go and install some new tool to actually do so. And if you're suggesting using something like IRC, Matrix, XMPP, a mailing list, or anything else out there, there's going to be a lot of developers out there who've never had to interact with these before and don't even know where to start. And because things like that might seem like a pretty big hurdle, they're just not going to bother learning altogether. Outside of people who have like slow hardware or they're in countries that can't access Discord or they have accessibility needs, most other people don't really have a problem using Discord. Take something like Linux kernel development. I've seen so many developers out there who want to go and submit some sort of patch. Maybe it's like a very basic patch, but it's still they want to get their first patch into the Linux kernel. But because everything is done through the Linux kernel mailing list, there's a lot of developers out there who have no idea how to work with that, have no idea how they're supposed to format their emails, have no idea how to do plain text emails or anything else like that, that actually is a hurdle to getting involved in that development. You're making an investment when you choose to use one service over another. When you choose Discord, you're legitimizing their platform and divesting from FOSS platforms. Even if you think they have a bigger reach and a bigger audience, choosing them is a short-term individualistic play which signals a lack of faith in and support for the long-term goals of the FOSS ecosystem as a whole. The FOSS ecosystem needs your investment. There are a couple of things to break apart here. Firstly, I do agree that by using Discord, you are legitimizing their platform and divesting from FOSS platforms, but anyone who's seen my videos before knows exactly what I'm going to say. Just set up a bridge. So, no matter what you want to say about how great IRC, Matrix, or anything else out there is, 
There are some people who are never going to use that, but are still actually good developers. Some people who care about FOSS software, but just don't think those tools are actually in a state that are worth actually using. So what you do is you set up a bridge. You have a Discord server, and you bridge it to a matrix room, an IRC room, whatever you want to use, and then the people who are going to use Discord will use Discord, Everybody else will use Matrix, and then if someone wants to move from Discord to Matrix, it's very easy to do so, and you're not fracturing the community. The only people who won't get involved there are the people who absolutely despise Discord and want nothing to do with it. But I said earlier that this is a tiny number of people, and it makes more sense to get as many people as possible. Secondly, there's no argument to be made about whether Discord has a bigger reach and bigger audience. Yes, you do have a citation here. Discord appears to inflate its participation numbers compared to other services. It shows all users who have ever joined the server rather than all users who are actively using the server. Be careful not to optimize for non-participants when choosing your tools. Matrix does the same thing as well. Like, Matrix shows everyone who's joined the room, not everyone who's active. So, that's not just a Discord problem. And I also fully agree that the FOSS ecosystem needs your investment, both monetarily and also time or user-wise, whatever you want to call it. And I think the better way to do that is by exposing Discord users to the options that exist without completely excluding them. By showing them that, yeah, things like Matrix do exist, here's how you use it, it actually bridges with what already exists, so you can actually jump back and forth, try it out, maybe you don't like it, maybe you want to go back to it when it's in a better state. That's something you can do by having a bridge. One of the things I noticed from a lot of people who really care about free software is forgetting about those people who are sort of like on the fence. People who are just discovering free software, who aren't fully in the cult, they haven't drunk all the Kool-Aid yet, they're just trying it out, seeing if it's something that's actually going to fit into their lives, seeing if this is something that actually does make sense as an idea that they want to try to push. Those are the sort of people you want to encourage to join if you want to see free software actually grow. Yes, it's absolutely great to sort of pander to the people who already care about free software, but they care about free software already, they're not going to leave no matter what. Back to what Drew was saying, why should someone choose to use your FOSS project when you refuse to use theirs? Solidarity and mutual support is the key to success. Now, this is a weird statement because have you ever considered how any of the projects you're actually using communicate with each other. Do you care that Linux Kernel uses a mailing list? Do you care that maybe some projects use Gitia? Do you care that other projects use Discord? Do you actually know how any of your favorite projects actually communicate with each other? Because outside of the Linux Kernel, I don't think I can name any. Obviously, if it's something you're a developer on, that doesn't count. But for anything you're not a developer on, can you name the way it actually communicates? And better yet, if you can name it, has that ever been a part of the consideration for whether you're going to actually use that software? Now, I want to make something very clear because there's going to be a lot of people who watch this thinking, oh, Brody doesn't like free software. He thinks everybody should use proprietary Discord. That's not what I'm saying. And anybody who thinks that, you're a little bit dumb. That would be completely insane. So what I'm saying here is if you don't want to use Discord, perfectly fine. Don't do it. I don't really care. If you want to make a project and not use Discord, use Matrix, IRC, mailing list, whatever you want to use, also perfectly fine. But I don't think it's as simple as saying Discord proprietary, Discord bad, just use free software because there actually are serious downsides from getting rid of Discord just the fact that you're going to lose tons and tons of potential developers. Now, at the end of the article, Drew mentions that everything in here can be generalized to other proprietary tools, whether that's GitHub, Twitter, YouTube, anything else like that. And likewise, many of my criticisms actually do remain the same as well especially with something like, say, YouTube. Sure, you could say, I'm never going to use YouTube. I'm only going to upload videos to a website I own, library, and Peertube. But by doing that, you are massively handicapping your message, and hardly anybody is going to see it. Yes, 
you absolutely can grow on these other platforms or building a site yourself. But by doing that, you're already putting yourself 10 steps behind. Now, I didn't go over every single line of the blog post, mainly because Drew has a habit of repeating himself. But I will leave it linked in the description down below. So if you want to go and read it for yourself and see if I'm, you know, completely mischaracterizing what's actually being said, I would encourage you to actually do so. Along with many of the other blog posts that Drew has put out as well. Even though a lot of the time I don't agree with as extreme of a stance as he actually takes, I still think that his blog is worth a read and everybody should go and check it out. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you agree with Drew and people should be avoiding things like Discord if they care about free software and should be avoiding other proprietary platforms? If you're saying this on YouTube, you're a liar because you're on YouTube right now. But maybe it is what you believe in your heart, but you don't actually follow it. Or do you take a more moderate stance and think, okay, I want to avoid proprietary software in my life, but if I need to use it, then I'm going to use it. Let me know. I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, certainly bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea, a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays, and that's going to be it for me. So, I'm out.